On Yarn Spotlight this week, Clara Parks is joining us to talk about silk, glorious silk. Hi, Clara. Hi, Uni. So just give us a brief, quick refresher on what silk is, because it's a pretty interesting story. Silk is an extruded, it's, it's the fiber from the silkworm. It's mm -hmm. basically, if you unravel the cocoon, mm -hmm. in an ideal world, you'll have one long, long, long single filament, as long as a football field. Mm -hmm. That's usually saved for the weaving market. They call that reeled silk. Mm -hmm. What we get is silk from the cocoon that has then been chopped into shorter lengths that are more suitable for hand knitting purposes. Okay, that are suitable for spinning into yarn. Yes, really. exactly. So what are kind of the qualities? I mean, when I think of silk, I think of the beautiful luster right, the mm -hmm. drape, mm -hmm. um, but it's also pretty dense. It's pretty dense because it's a solid tube. Unlike mm -hmm. protein fibers, which have all these different layers of things going on, they have like evaporative cooling and doors that open and close. <laughs> silk is a solid tube of material. It, it has no natural curl pattern to it, mm -hmm. it has no crimp. So along with that, it has no elasticity. Mm -hmm. Silk likes to stretch. Like if you're making a shawl and you block it, you can really block, 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 mm -hmm. block, and it won't spring back into shape. Mm -hmm. Those are qualities that you like for certain things, but you may not want them for everything that you knit. Well, and so I feel like we've been seeing more and more um, yarns that are silk blends. Yes, silk is a wonderful thing to add to other fibers. Silk is often added to merino. Both mm -hmm. of what we're looking at today are silk merino blends. It's often added because merino as a fine wool, mm -hmm. it has teeny tiny scales covering the surface and they're so tiny that they make the surface of the fiber almost matte. It almost oh. has, it doesn't have as much of a bright luster to mm -hmm. it. And so silk is a great thing to add to merino to give it that shine and that sheen. But it's also, when you blend silk and merino, merino, if you're a baker, you could say merino acts as kind of a leavening agent mm -hmm. for the silk. It, it opens up the fibers that and it's going to give you more loft and more elasticity, which makes it more pleasant to work with as a hand knitter in terms of maintaining tension mm -hmm. and being able to manipulate your stitches if you want to do cables or twisted stitches or things like that. If you have merino in there, the yarn is going to be more yielding to you. So this is a beautiful example, and this is about half and half? It's 55% uh, merino, 45% silk. Okay. And this one, sometimes I like to think of yarn as a canvas, and mm -hmm. in this case, for silk, it's a beautiful canvas when you leave it as uninterrupted as possible. Mm -hmm. This is a singles, basically one strand of continuous fibers that have been mm -hmm. twisted. It reflects color back beautifully. You don't have any interruption of ply shadows going on. Mm -hmm. The thing with this, though, it, it's absolutely exquisite for a lot of things. This is a heavier weight. Mm -hmm. I knit it on smaller needles than you would because I wanted to give more structure to it. Mm -hmm. The law of yarn, twist equals energy. The more energy, the more strength. This, there's not as much twist, mm -hmm. so I added it by going down a needle size. Oh, that makes sense. And then if you if you want to do something even more stretchy, mm -hmm. then you can do what I like to call the Spanx stitch. You add moss or seed stitch, any kind of alternating staggering knits and purls. It's going to pull the fabric together even more, <laughs> give it nice stretch and bounce. Do you do anything special when you when you knit with silk? You know, sometimes I, I silk snags on my fingertips while I'm working with it. Yeah, that that can really be a problem, especially if you live in cold climates mm -hmm. where your hands get dry in the wintertime. The one thing that I like to do, also because it smells really nice, you cut a lemon, this is going to sound strange, <laughs> but you cut a lemon in half and you rub it on your fingers. Oh. And for some reason, I don't know the science, but it, it tones down the snagging potential. The other thing I would recommend for a yarn like this where it's so loosely spun mm -hmm. is definitely seek needles that have, like this one here, that have a softer tip. Oh, that not makes so perfect sense. Pointy, yeah. pointy, and then you can look away. You don't have to focus as much when you're knitting. Okay, and then this one is also a silk and merino blend, but it's a little different. This is yes, it's a little different. This is a much finer weight. It's 75% merino, 15% mm -hmm. silk, and then a nice little dusting of 10% cashmere. Oh. And the cashmere, the silk is giving like the, the merino is the foundation, right? And mm -hmm. the silk is giving a little bit of weight and a little bit of sheen to the end result. Mm -hmm. And then the cashmere is giving that dusting that kind of stardust over the whole thing that when you wash it, this one's been, well, they've all been washed, but this guy right here, you can see mm -hmm. a little bit of the halo and the bloom that starts to rise over the surface. And that would be the cashmere kicking into gear. Well, and for, uh, how come you chose to knit lace and texture with this? Um, 
you know, is there a certain, are there certain stitches that you think would, would pair really nicely with this particular construction of yarn or style of yarn? Well, this I wanted to play with, because it's so round, mm -hmm. it's great for really three-dimensional kinds of things, mm -hmm. like a feather and fan where you've got those great pearl ridges going on, but it's such a fine weight that it also renders the yarn overs. It gives you a nice lace, kind mm -hmm. of the open lace motif, but then with the three-dimensionality of the ribbing. And the single ply construction in a yarn like this, it makes a beautiful canvas for hand-painted colors, which is what these are. You see how it really, it's like a sky on a cloudy day. It can be very, very beautiful. Well, absolutely gorgeous. It's so interesting to see what happens when you add a little or a lot of silk mm -hmm. to something else. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Clara.